Welcome back y'all. So today I'm going to be talking about 556 and what barrel lengths I think are best. So when we have to think about this, um, you have to put it in context. When you talk about in, in terms of how far do you need to shoot? Um, obviously guns are made to kill things and destroy things. Our, and 556 five, has been proven to do exceptionally well at that in certain circumstances. And that's one of why one of the reasons it's been become the pretty much one of the main fighting calibers in the world. Um, but one of the downsides of 556 five, is it depends on velocity. Typically, uh, you need about 2,400 feet per second or so for 556 five, to do what it was designed to do in tissue. Well, when you look at some of the velocities you get out of, you know, barrel length affects velocity. You know, it is the size that matters when it, you know, that counts when you have, you know, when you're talking about velocity. You know, it was designed originally to work out of a 20 inch barrel gun, the M16. And we've progressively gone shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. But what happens when you do that is you lose velocity every step, step down you take. Certain, I call them Goldilocks barrel lengths work. They don't really lose velocity below the step above them, but they have a lot above, above the step below them. So we'll talk about that. Starting off, um, you know, if you go, I don't have a 20 inch gun. I've been meaning to get one for a long time because I'm in the nostalgia and stuff like that. I shot a lot of matches with iron sight 20 inch guns. Uh, and I do like them. And that's what they're designed to, 556 is designed to run out of. Typically, you get close to 3,100 feet per second out of like a 55 grain bullet with that. And it allows you to shoot out past, you know, it'd still be above 2,400 at 500 yards uh, or 500 meters, which still means that it's effective at that range. You step down, the next closest step down would be like 18 inch, like this SPR. Uh, Mark 12, this is not a Mark 12, obviously. Uh, it has a Mark 12 barrel in it, but it's not clone correct at all. You, you move down from this, you only lose about a hundred or so feet per second by dropping down two inches. And this is one of those, this is one of the only locks barrels, in my opinion, because that two inches, this is about the same length as a 20 inch gun with a A2 on it, but it, it just, it feels more handy, with especially without the can. If I throw the AEM5, the Mark 12 style suppressor on it, you're adding about that much muzzle length to the to the gun. So you end up being longer than a M16 length. But if you needed to, you could take the can off and it's only a couple inches shorter than say your standard 16 inch gun. Next down, you really don't have anything between 18 and 16. I don't have my 16 inch AR out here, but this uh, SIG 556 is 16 inches. You lose about another, you know, 200 feet per second or so going to 16 inches from 18 inches. See, it goes back to that, you know, 20 to 18, you only lose about 100, but 18 to 16, you lose about 200. And, you know, however, you know, you gain a lot more portability with a 16 inch barrel. Uh, so, you know, when you start dwindling away, say you were getting 3,100 feet per second out of a 20 inch gun, you get 2,900 to 3,000 feet per second out of an 18 inch gun. Well, then you're only gonna get 27 to 2,800 out of a 16 inch gun. 
And so then you move down to say a 14.5, which I don't have. You don't really lose much there. You lose 50 to 100 feet per second, but that still puts you around the 27 to 2600 range, 2650 maybe at best. Then you move down to what I, my next favorite barrel length, which is 12.5. Barrel on this gun ends pretty much right here. Uh, this is pin and welded, but um, you really only lose about another 100 feet per second below 14.5. So you're talking, you know, you're you're at the 2550, 2600 range on velocity, maybe even 2700. Uh, you're closer to 2700, so you still have a lot of velocity coming out of this gun. Um, but you gain a, if this wasn't pinned and welded, you know, if my barrel was only came out to here for say, like on an AR, or, you know, with a hider, flash hider, you know, right here, you gain a lot of portability out of this, but you don't lose a lot as far as terminal effect. Moving down. You know, to say an 11.5 inch out of this MCX, you lose about another 150 feet per second, 100, 100 to 150, out of, you know, going down that next inch down. So, you know, that puts you around the 25, 2600 feet per second range out of the muzzle. You're starting to get closer to that 2400, and it really starts to show. You know, this is probably only a 250 at most meter gun as far as the round being lethal at that point um, and I'm talking mostly 555 grain stuff or 62 grain stuff with like 77 grain open tip match for the you know like the Hornady tap round 75 grains you get a little bit more effectiveness at slower speeds but most of us aren't shooting that a lot you're shooting 55 grain or 62 grain green tip uh, so if that's what you stock up and you'll have an 11 half inch gun, you're going to be ice picking past 200, 250 meters. And so that it still, they don't want to be shot by it, but it's not as effective. When you move down to the G Watt, you know, golden child, the, the Mark 18, uh, with the 10.3 inch barrel. You lose about another 150, 200 feet per second below the 11.5. So now you're, you know, barely 2,500, maybe right at that 2,400 feet per second range coming out of the muzzle. So you're pretty much barely at that threshold with 55 grain as it's at the muzzle. That makes these, you know, an 80 to 100 meter gun at best when it comes to lethality. Yes, 70, again, 77 grain can help push your effectiveness further, but you're still not going to get much more effectiveness out of this. What the benefit of these is, you can imagine how much more compact and handy this gun is in close quarters. That's assuming you have hearing protection, <laughs> because I will tell you, even with hearing protection, 10-inch barreled ARs are obnoxious. Uh, this was 11.5 to an extent. So what I end up doing is you get you end up throwing a fucking you know, throwing a can on it, and I'm not even gonna twist that on, but you throw a can on it, and now you're essentially at the same length as a 16-inch gun, just a little bit short, like say um, 8K here. The AK with the 12.5 pin and welded barrel is like two, it's like a, maybe an eight to a quarter inch shorter than this with a suppressor. And I would even venture to say that take an 11 to 5, throw that on there, and you take my, the AK. Again, I'm just saying a pin and welded. This is, this is exactly 16 inches is why I say this. You know, 11.5 inch, you know, you're an inch, inch and a half longer than that. And this is, you know, a Saker 5.56K can, so it's not a, the smallest can there is, but it's, you know, a shorter can. <clears throat> so, 
What does that mean? Well, if you take the, I'm gonna compare this SPR versus this Mark 18. You know, this gun has been these this barrel combination has was proven in combat to be lethal out past 600 um, with 77 grain. If you took this with 77 grain. You're looking at 100, 150 meter lethality, uh, but you look at the, you know, compact, you know, the size difference when it comes to how compact it is. And it, that's not totally fair because I don't think the stock on the SPR is all the way out. But this is way more compact, way lighter, easy to wield around, even with a can. It's still shorter. It's just a matter of what are you doing with the weapon? Uh, or the tool, I should say. Do you need to shoot far? Uh, well, you want the best velocity you can get. You know, this is a, this barrel, this is a ballistic advantage, Mark 12 profile barrel, but um, it's, you know, half to three quarter MOA gun. Uh, so if I called the wind right, this is an 800 yard gun all day long, easily with, you know, and now the, even at eight, you know, with this barrel, the 556 wouldn't be that effective at 800 yards at all, but you know, 600 yards is really too easy with this style gun, but it's not good for, if you have to do any up close work with it. The Apollo opposite, the Mark 18 style, which is as short as you should ever go with 5.56. Not effective at all in an open field. Um, you have to be, you know, relatively walking right up on whatever you need to shoot in order to be effective with it. But if you are inside somewhere or you need to be up close this gun is absolutely far superior for maneuverability um again it really comes down to what you are looking to get out of it or need it for if you need it for up close go shorter if you need it for further away go longer don't think you're going to get some magic um thing out of it 12.5 is a good in between I think you can't legally there's no way to legally make a 12.5 inch barrel rifle in an AR aka you can with this like four piece but this kind of defeats the purpose because it's like it's so heavy it's like having extra barrel so honestly um, this is kind of a mood argument in an AR you, a 12.5 inch pistol would be ideal uh, into me because you could go out to you know three four hundred yards no problem and at that point PID becomes a thing so you if you don't have like magnified glass you're not being effective with that if you but it's still handy enough that you could do up close work with it um, and this is an AK so it's heavier and less but a 12 inch AR 12.5 inch AR would be this you know even better as far as compactness and maneuverability i don't really think that the 14.5s really offer that much yes they're a little bit shorter you know you're talking about an inch and a half shorter than say a 16 inch with a regular flash hider on it but then you have to pin and weld and all that i just assume get a 16 inch that i could change stuff out on the 13.9 and 13.7 inch barrels that I've that are becoming popular kind of the same thing you know you have to pin them well and you don't there's really not much benefit the only difference between a if you did not like the idea of a pistol brace on a 12.5 inch barrel and you want to be able to run the full stock, then yeah, go 13.9 or 13.7, whichever, uh, pinned and welded, and I wouldn't go any longer than that. Because what, that, what that'll what that give you is, um, 
essentially right at that 16 inch mark. If you had a 14.5, unless you're running like the AT bird cage, you're going to be longer than 16 inches. So what's the point? Um, yeah. So bottom line, my, my three Goldilocks barrel, what I would call, um, actually let me step back. Don't, don't go below 10.3. 7.5 inch 5.56 gun totally pointless you people everybody around you will hate you you'll be deaf you'll be blind from muzzle flash it's it's stupid but my three top three barrel picks i would say would be uh for up close actually i wouldn't even consider 10.3 i'd go either 12.5 with a pistol 13.9 pinned and welded for a rifle or go with the 18 inch uh, those are the three that kind of, as far as for your velocity goes, give you the best bang for your buck. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's pretty much my opinions. I don't even have half the guns I was, that, you know, that I was talking about. But when it comes to just what they act, what the round is that designed to do, what it actually does at a different velocities. That's it's just the facts. So, if you have any questions, make sure and comment. And uh, as always, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll be back.